This week, we're taking you to South Dakota. Home of the Badlands. The Black Hills. Crazy Horse. Mammoths. And of course, Mount Rushmore. And we're going to be showing you none of those. Well, except for the woolly mammoths. We don't have time to take you sightseeing this week because we've got some important business to take care of so that we can continue our travels. Sharing why we're changing our residency. And registering our vehicles in South Dakota. And the process was so simple, it'll leave us wondering. <laughs> Is this legal? While we were having such a great time in Colorado, we needed to travel to South Dakota to take care of some business. We traveled up the 25 with a plan to stop in Wyoming at a Harvest Host winery to break up the trip. We found ourselves in the middle of nowhere, nothing around for miles. And then... Oh my gosh, that was a washboard road. Ja, 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 ja. I don't think that was a good idea for the bus, but we did it. We made it. Yeah, we made it. Tonight, <laughs> it may sound like we're staying in the jungle, <laughs> but we're staying at the only vineyard that grows grapes in Wyoming. We just went into the winery, had a little wine tasting, and uh, that really loud sound. It uh, says, birds in distress, which attracts birds of prey because they think there's going to be some someone dead <laughs> yeah, they, because of the distress. Oh, we're not sure if it's gonna be noisy through the night, so I'm gonna give you a little peek here. Here's the noise maker. Headed out the next day and had our first run in with viewers Jim and Julie. Nice to meet you guys. Oh. <laughs> Spotted us in the wild at a rest stop. In each new state, we're blown away by the changes in the landscapes. But arriving at a new camp spot, there is always a little apprehension. What's it going to be like? What's over that hill? It's rare that you find a place so quiet. This week we're camping at the Anguster Recreation Area. Unfortunately, it's not all fun and games because we're here to do some business this week. So we're just gonna chill out tonight and enjoy this peace and quiet. We get caught up on everything we're doing. Why we're here in South Dakota this week, tomorrow. So the reason we're in South Dakota is to get driver's licenses and change over one of our vehicle registrations. So all you need to do is stay one night in South Dakota and then you can become residents. Or at least that's what we think. So we headed out to the town of Hot Springs to find out. Your destination is on the left. Wow. That was the fastest, friendliest, easiest DMV experience I've ever had in my life. So let's explain to you why we want to be South Dakota residents and how it's helpful for full-time travelers. So if you're full-time traveling, there's three states that are very full-time friendly. Texas, Florida, and uh, South Dakota. It looks like Florida is very good if you're full-time friendly and want to homeschool your children. Since we don't have children, South Dakota was our best bet. All it required for us is to have a South Dakota mailing address, which we do have. So there's this company called America's Mailbox, and they pretty much provide mailboxes for full-time travelers. It's not a PO box, it's a PMB, personal mailbox. And they send us an email when we get mail. 
they'll send you a photo of what the mail looks like and they'll forward it to you if you want or you can say no that's junk you can throw it away we were able to get our mailbox our car registration the buses registration all sorted out without ever coming to south dakota the only reason we came here was to get our driver's licenses and now that we got those that also means we're registered to vote in south dakota you can vote by mail so because of our america's mailbox address we'll get an alert when our mail-in ballots arrive be able to have that forwarded to us and be able to participate in American democracy. You only have to stay one night in the state to then go apply for your driver's license. So we're staying here a few nights, so all we need to do is take our receipt from our camp spot. From that, we're able to fill out a number of forms with proof of an address in South Dakota and claim residency to get our driver's license. Now we picked Hot Springs because we thought it looked like a pretty place to stay. And we figured it's a smaller town and it'll probably make the process easier. No oh boy, did it make it easy. We got there, we didn't have an appointment. We filled out our paperwork. By the time we almost filled our paperwork out, they were ready to take us. So the DMV uh, in this area is only open on Fridays. And it's not actually at a DMV building, it's a pop-up DMV. And I guess they travel around from county to county. I've never gone into a DMV and walked out with my license in my hands within half an hour. <laughs> That's amazing. And we're laughing and joking with them the whole time too. Like it was, it was just, it was a breeze. running out right now to the little town of Hot Springs. We gotta to head to the library to get some paperwork printed out. They've got a public Wi-Fi. I got my laptop, so we're gonna be using a VPN. Anytime we use free Wi-Fi, we also use a VPN to protect our personal information. So thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. NordVPN stops hackers from accessing your passwords, bank details, meaning the bad guys can't steal your information. Think of it as like a virtual tunnel that keeps your information safe as it travels through it. Plus, it lets you access even more TV shows and movies than you normally can. Like, if I wanted to watch The Office, it's not available in the US. But if I go and change my NordVPN access to say I'm in the UK, now I can watch all nine seasons of The Office. I like this chair. It is ergonomically correct. Get an exclusive deal with four months free off of a two year plan with our link right here, nordvpn.com rehabitate. Plus it's risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. Big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to business. Very easy transaction at the treasurer here in Hot Springs to get our updated registration for the Jeep. So that means we are now legal to drive the Jeep around, title to our South Dakota registration. Well, we are here for business and we've got a ton of work to get done as well. Well, it is the weekend and we thought we'd go explore some of the hot spots in town. Today we're heading up to the Mammoth site, and this is a pretty unique place. In 1974, a developer bought this land, was gonna turn it into houses, and found some woolly mammoths buried under the dirt. I can summarize the story of how all these bones ended up here. Basically, there was a sinkhole and there would be grass around the sinkhole and animals that would come to try and eat the grass would easily slip into the sinkhole because the shale was really slippery. And this was thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. So one of the animals that fell in pretty often was a mammoth. So apparently by counting the tusks that they found of the woolly mammoths, there are over 60 of them here in the sinkhole. I think just seeing the size of how big they are, <laughs> they're more massive. 
So these giant short face bears were massive. They were like six feet tall. This thing is amazingly huge. He makes the North American black bear look sweet and cuddly in comparison. I mean, I wouldn't want to try cuddle him. He can reach higher than me. But the giant short-faced bear looks like a monster from Game of Thrones or something. He can't be real. And now, the main event. The woolly mammoth area. You don't quite realize how big they are until you can see that they could walk over you and clear the top of your head. What did you get shivers thinking about? Standing next to a bison. <laughs> And of course, in a town called Hot Springs, we had to go for a dip. Before we leave, let's give you a quick tour of the campground. What I really love about this campground is just how spacious it is, especially the spot we have. There's just so much space between us and the other campers. It's pretty quiet in this campground on the weekdays, on the shoulder season, weekends it fills up. However, that kind of showed us just how spread out these campsites are. There's a campsite across this way from us, but other than that, there's not really been anybody around where we've got the bus parked. Now our campground has 15, 30, and 50 amp, which is great. This week, while we're running around doing our errands, we'll know we can keep air conditioning or heating going to keep the cats comfortable while we're gone. One note on the campsites here, the pedestal for your electric is way back in the corner. I got my 25 foot 50 amp out and I couldn't reach it. So I had to go get my 30 amp. I got a 50 foot 30 amp, ran it back. It's working fine. What I don't like so much is this aluminum picnic table. It gets really hot in the sun and that doesn't feel so good on your skin. I'd rather have a wood one, but you know, it's not the end of the world. There's a fire pit, which is great. And best of all, I mean, this lake is kind of cool. It almost looks like a beach in places, but it's not, it's a reservoir. Angostura Recreation Area has, I believe, four different campgrounds. We've driven past all of them. They all look like they're similar layout. And one thing that I really like about the area is they've got cabins as well as some resorts. So you could actually have a meetup with family or some kind of event in the area, I imagine. What I don't like about the area are these burr things. And they hurt. I have stepped on those, got them stuck in my foot. I had to have Mello perform surgery on my hand <laughs> several times while we've been yeah, here. Yeah, we've both taken them out of both of each other's hands and feet multiple times. Now we talked to the ranger, he said the water's very low because there's a drought. Surprise, just like there is everywhere. It's actually 16 feet lower than it normally is, which means there's this massive beach here. And just like Mella said, it almost looks like you're at the ocean. Now we haven't taken full advantage of this water. We were so busy, we had so much work, so much business to take care of but it is really calm and peaceful and it's so huge. I really wish we could have and I would recommend doing some kind of water sport out here, whether it's taking a dip in the lake or paddle boarding, kayaking, windsurfing, got a boat, <laughs> it's great. Now there are two, are two dump stations as you enter the park. One is in the north entrance right near Hot Springs. I don't recommend you come in that entrance. Go down further, look on the map, 
go down I believe the 18 and come in the south entrance it's not nearly as hilly or windy especially if you've got a big rig so the reservoir takes up 4,407 acres. It's huge! And the space around it, the whole recreation area, therefore is also really huge. We just went walking every single day on the bike path. And it was so peaceful and so beautiful. We'd see deer off in the mountains. We've had a great time. It's very affordable to stay here at the time we did. Uh, I think our spots were $26 a night with electric hookups and access to dump and fresh water. So we know there's so much more we would love to see in South Dakota, but we were really here to take care of some of these legal matters that we had to wrap up. And they were so easy and quick that you almost wonder, <laughs> is this legal? I think it's the bonus of South Dakota being full-time traveler friendly and going to a small town to get your paperwork done. So while we know there's so many great places to see in South Dakota, we will be back. But it is time for us to start heading south. So we're still pretty new to being full-time travelers. So we thought we'd take you along on our travel days so you can see what it's like driving a 40-foot bus around and towing a vehicle behind you. I was very uncomfortable. I, I don't think I've ever been that uncomfortable. He'll kill you. <laughs> he will absolutely tear you to pieces. <laughs> this guy and this guy are the same age. How adorable is this log cabin library? We're staying at Table Mountain Vineyard and Winery tonight. And that right there is Table Mountain. I know we've got some fellow South Africans out there watching this. Not quite the same as Table Mountain in South Africa, is it? Is there a mosquito in my face? Yep. <laughs> Mosquitoes are crazy. You vote by mail. So because of our America's mailbox address, we'll get an alert when our mail-in ballots arrive, be able to have that forwarded to us, and be able to participate in this great democracy of America. <laughs> I don't know if you should say it like that. <laughs> we use a free Wi-Fi. But anytime we use free Wi-Fi, we also use a VPN to protect our personal information. So thank you for no... But anytime we use free Wi-Fi, we also use a VPN. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get out of there. <laughs> but anytime we use free Wi-Fi, <laughs> more TVs and movies than you normally can. TVs. TVs. <laughs>